comic book writer Scott Snyder has hired the fired comics book gatekeeper from Kickstarter to uh, manage and run his Kickstarter. There's a lot more here than meets the eye. Sorry, 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 wrong intro. Hi everyone, it's Az here from Heel vs. Babyface. Writer Scott Snyder of Batman fame has teamed up with artist Tony S. Daniel to crowdfund. Yes, crowdfund. He's stepping away from a lot of projects at DC for this now. His own personal book called Nocturnal. And so far, after a day and a half, a couple of days, doing very well. Uh, 102, nearly $103,000. My guesstimate on this campaign was that in the 31 days that Kickstarter do is going to hit uh, approximately 350000 That's what I project it will do. However, Scott Snyder has actually hired former gatekeeper for the comics division at Kickstarter, who was recently fired from Kickstarter to manage and run his Kickstarter. So what is going on here? Well, I think this actually works twofold. And to understand where Scott's coming from, we have to look at somebody else. And that somebody is this guy here, Sean Gordon Murphy. Now, Sean Gordon Murphy, I, I like the guy and he frustrates me incredibly. He frustrates me because he either doesn't understand the power which he holds in mainstream comics, or he's just too soft a guy to turn around to talentless uh, harpies who have systematically destroyed the mainstream comic book industry by taking over established characters, running them into the ground, changing sexes, colors, ethnicities, uh, orientations, everything in the sake of wokeness and not appreciating or respecting the history of the characters and why people like said characters. And he's allowed these people to dictate where his comic book... Uh, I, don't, I don't, don't quite know the word to express it. Legacy is going right now. Uh, his Batman White Knight series have proven to be exceedingly successful. They're very well written and very well drawn by him as well. And he took to YouTube, made a very bad video about wanting to go on to crowdfunding and crowdfund his project, which is the plot holes. Not a great name, but you know, there you go. And he was not quite appreciative of how crowdfunding works. I think he saw the success that Ethan Van Skyver had had and thought that he could easily make a quick 500 to a million dollars on a crowdfunding campaign. However, he was being advised by his peers, and by peers, I mean said screeching harpies who write trash, who get gifted positions, whose bodies of work haven't made any money, and they are hot garbage, that making money in the COVID climate was a bad look. Yes, there are so many air quotes everywhere with this. So much so, he got browbeaten. And not only did he get browbeaten, he was attempted to be cancelled on more than one occasion. Firstly, because he had an association with uh, Doug Tenaple. He created a character for his Bigfoot. Uh, campaign which got pulled he backed down once there was pressure applied onto him then Mags Visaggio uh trash filth person uh glass somebody glass irrelevant nobody trash filth glass and also Kwanzaa massive racist Kwanzaa uh they all took to Twitter to openly discuss his cancellation as well uh, then Mags, a little bit later on, again attempted to cancel Sean Gordon Murphy by saying that he loved bomb bombed her. Love bombed. 
and that he had promised her um, work and monies. Essentially a free ride, something that they've had the moment they stepped into this industry because of who they are or more importantly, what they are. Not talented, I'll say that for a fact. Openly again, putting and trying to associate horrendous words next to him. Oh, I'm not saying that he anyway attempted to groom me. I'm not saying in any way that he attempted to make any advances on me. Which, of course, he would not. But they were trying to plant the association next to him. It was disgusting. But as I said, they're filth. So, Scott... Uh, sorry, Sean was clearly... Uh, taken aback by all of this. He shrunk. Uh, his campaign, when I say shrunk back, he, he never promoted it. There was no promotion for this. There are other things that are wrong with it. Why is it under this Jeffrey Martin guy? Why isn't it under Sean Gordon Murphy? Uh, but he never promoted it. He never pushed it. It almost felt as if he was embarrassed to have it on Indiegogo. Uh, it was almost as if he thought if he dared promote his own campaign, then they would again attempt to cancel him. And he just wanted to create his own Batverse stuff with DC, which seems to be going ahead and good for him. However, he has stepped back and removed himself now from social media. What a surprise. In actual fact, probably the best thing that he can do. He frustrated me because... He could have turned around and told him to fuck off. Which is what he should have done. Which is what Scott Snyder should have done too to other people. But Scott, he took another route. He took a simp route. Uh, which uh, is not good at all. So what I think happened here is Scott Snyder saw what happened to Sean Gordon Murphy. Why? Because it's kind of partially happened to him before. Uh, when Scott Snyder was out camping with his family, yes, his wife and two boys, I believe he's got, um, there was a massive Twitter campaign to denounce Comicgate. As you do. Uh, as there has been for a long time. And we all know the true reason why the mainstream industry attempt to associate Comicsgate with all the istism and phobe words. It's because they're scared shitless. It's because the people on the crowdfunding side are not playing the political games that they want to play. But more importantly, they can't control them. And this is about control. And they want to control the main people. Mags proved it when she said that Sean Gordon Murphy had promised her work, which would have meant bucks for her. No. Sean Gordon Murphy was pleasant to her, fucking hated her probably inside, but pleasant because he didn't want a screeching harpy trying to ruin his career. Because that's what you're known for with your Whisper Network and associated harpies of filth. But Scott Snyder was away with his family, comes back and gets attacked by Heather Irrelevant bitch Antos. Nobody. Heather, unimportant, never will go down in history, Antos. And she denounced him for not speaking out. The guy was away with his family. Nobody, uh, he's somebody who doesn't live on social media like these people. But no, he got, he got browbeat. He got browbeat. And had to do all the denouncements. Oh no, I do not support the comic skates. But it doesn't matter. Because you're a man. You're a white male. And you're already guilty of that crime. And so they were always going to place a target on your back. Because Sean Gordon Murphy and Scott Snyder, they're the top dogs. They were pretty much the top dogs. And they want to control them. They want to get into there. They want to manipulate them. They want to get work with them because that's the way for them to get uh, stepping stones onto other things as well as a little bit of dollar as well. But then it didn't just stop there. 
Scott Snyder had to come out with the I won't face fuck my employees pledge that Tom King fell to his knees and started kissing the feet of all these screeching harpies about who just decided to attack anyone that he wanted. Scott, I've got no balls. Sorry, Tom, I've got no balls, King. But Scott Snyder did a little bit himself. He placated himself to Heather Antos. Heather attacks Dean Kane on Twitter. Scott joins in. Then he starts tweeting her. Oh, Heather, you beat some me twos it. Oh, is he woozy pussies? Aren't I being a good little simpass? Because these are weak men. The weak men who should be turning around to these people and going, uh, excuse me, who the fuck are you? Who are you? Show me your numbers, bitch. Show me your numbers. I'll show you mine. I'll show you mine. Show me yours. But they can't because they can't sell comics. That's why. And I think a lot of this from the screeching harpy side of matters goes down to the fact that they know they're talentless. They know that they lack the talent of these people. They know that a lot of them have got their jobs because of what they are. Not because of their talent. And when you've got a big ego and low self-esteem, it's a cracking combination. A very destructive combination. But Scott played the game again. But as soon as he made the pledge, he gets attacked again. Ow, Scott! But it's not good enough because you were schmoozing with the comic skaters. Schmoozing means he was away on a camping trip with his wife and two kids. By the way, as I said, there is no forgiveness. You're already guilty of being a man, a white man particularly, in the comic book industry. That is it. The judge has passed the decree of guilt. It's just a matter of time until sentence is passed. Sentence is passed. So, what do you do? How do you protect yourself from something like that? Well, this is where the second part comes in before we go to that. You see, if Scott Snyder goes on to Indiegogo, then he's going to get Sean Gordon Murphy levels of attacked and attempted cancellation. He knows that. It's going to be seen as schmoozing up to the comics gate crowd. It's going to seem as if he understands and appreciates that this is where the money is. If you want to sell a comic. And of course, it's not about that. It's about having the right look. That's the most important aspect. So you go to Kickstarter. Because Kickstarter is the political platform. It's the hashtag BLM platform. It's the let's hire a gatekeeper to keep the unsavory wrong side of history people out of this platform, which only makes $1.5 million for itself a year. But let's prevent us from making money that we desperately need, that we've had to sack 40% of our staff. But it's the right side of history platform for Scott. So he can't schmoozy up to the comic skaters. That would result in immediate cancellation for him. So he doesn't want to be seen to pandering to that side. So he's saying, no thank you, comic skate. By coming onto Kickstarter, I am making a statement that I am not pandering, nor am I wishing to attract comic skaters money or comic skaters or people who just buy independent comics on Indiegogo, which is actually the right way of truly saying it. I'm going to go on to the correct political crowdfunding platform that my peers in the mainstream comic book industry, who I may do work again in the future for, are like, oh, okay. All right. Because that's the one that Camilla gatekept. But when you hire the gatekeeper, 
What's she going to also do for you? She's going to gatekeep. So not only is he showing the, the right signals to the mainstream industry, but he's protecting himself from the screeching harpies because he's hired a fucking screeching harpy. He's hired one to protect himself. So they can't come for Scott. They've got to go through her. Scott's giving her money. He's giving her a job. He's on the right side of history platform. He's trying to make himself immune to criticism from any side. Mainstream. And also not signaling to the comics gate crowd. It's sad. I mean, I used to like Scott Snyder a lot. I used to think he's a very talented writer. Um, he kind of wrote himself out of my good graces in as much as uh, by the time he was doing all the, the dark metal stuff, I, I thought it was just trash. Utter trash. But I supported it because I love Greg Capullo. I think Greg Capullo's art is absolutely outstanding. Uh, and Greg Capullo does come across as a, as a decent guy. He's got his, you know, he's got his things like all of us. Seems like a down-to-earth... Uh, kind of a chap. But writing-wise, now nah, he lost me a long time ago. But he's protecting himself from all of this. Oh, boy. It's so sad. It's so freaking sad that people that just want to create comic books have to play these stupid games. And it's all because... Of the screeching harpies they let in and destroyed the mainstream industry. Congratulations. I will not be... I didn't support plot holes because of Murphy's flip-flopping. Even though I wanted to, I would not. And I will not support Scott Snyder's um, campaign either. I wish him the best of luck. I like Tony S. Daniel's uh, uh, Daniel artwork a lot, um, so I'm sorry about that. But I can't support somebody uh, who has been participating in this stupid, fucking anti-consumer crap. I won't. Scott and Sean both had something in common. They both could have told them to fuck off. And that would have gone a long way, a long way, to preventing a lot of what has happened. Why? Because DC need them more than they need DC. Sean Gordon Murphy, he can take to Indiegogo and make $261,000, way below par for what he should have made, by doing nothing. And when I say nothing, I mean no advertising, no promotion, nothing. Just made it, stuck it up, made myself a quick quarter of a million. They don't need the mainstream industry. The mainstream industry needed them. So if they spoke out, their power, their voice could have put the brakes on a lot of this. Or certainly drawn it uh, to the... Not necessarily the public eye, but internally, where discussions had to happen about the behavior of these people. But it didn't. And look at the state it's in now. There we go. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed the vid. If you did, do give it a thumbs up and also subscribe to the channel. Follow me on social media and YouTube for live streaming 8 p.m. UK time tonight on this channel. Me and Robert Mayer Burnett, we will be doing six of one again. Reviewing the Checkmate episode of The Prisoner. Hope to see as many of you there as possible. I'll be back with some more stuff very soon. You take care. Bye for now.